my grandmother, uh, probably until the 1960s. I graduated from high school in 67, so I know that clear up till about 67, I imagine, she, she still carried a, a handgun in her apron pocket. Uh, she had that, always carried that revolver, and my grandfather always carried his switchblade, and many times in his uh, suit jacket pocket, uh, he always had his brass knuckles. And uh, okay, here's here's the the switchblade that my guy he gave to me. It's it's the double. It's two blades for it, and the blade has been ground down over the years of lots of lots of use. And it's a it's a double bladed switchblade. So no matter how you pulled it out. Now this side here, the spring is broken. That side it's broken, and it, you see the blade's been ground down quite a lot. And on this side, the spring still works, and it opens up very nicely, very, very smooth. You said they made it that way so that no matter which way you pulled it out of your pocket, you had access right. to a blade. Right. Right. So when he pulled out his pocket, he didn't have to f uh, fiddle around trying to figure out, you know, which way to flip the knife over. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he he had a blade, and I'm sure this knife was not designed so much to kill someone, but more or less to slice them up and you know intimidate somebody. Mm -hmm. I would assume, but. Uh, you mentioned, what were you talking about, um, the leather in the pockets? Can you repeat that? Oh, yeah. Now, my grandfather also, as a boy growing up, used to tell me that a, a real man should know how to use a, a knife. And a knife was always better than, than a handgun. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Okay. Let's uh, repeat, just repeat that. There. Okay. Yeah, my grandfather always told me as a boy that a rural man should know how to use a knife, and that a knife was better than a handgun. He, uh, but he also showed me as a kid in his pants pockets on, he had his pants were always were tailor made, and he had a piece of heavy leather that was stitched inside of his pocket, and he could take a regular pocket knife, open the blade up partially, slide the knife in his pocket, and bring it back up into this little leather pocket. So when he reached in his his pocket, he could pull out this knife and it would snap open without cutting the, the fabric of his pants pocket. <laughs> and uh, and he always told me, he says, uh, one of these days is when you start having custom made suits, <laughs> uh, which I never have, but <laughs> he said that you know that you should have these kind of pockets made made for your, your suits so you can pull your knife out very quickly. My grandmother, Anesta, and I have no idea who the two people are standing b behind uh, them. I'm assuming that they're either relatives or just good friends. And I don't know what year, I have no idea what year they were married. And there's another photograph that was taken of them. I wish I could tell you what kind of car that is, but uh, it had to be sometime in the 1920s, I'm assuming, just from her dress, you know, her clothing and things. And uh, I don't know if you, I'm going to point over here, but if you notice the way his hand is held right there, I'll guarantee he's got a cigarette. He, is his, he, always, he always smoked, and she smoked, uh, and they were both by four pack a day people. And like I said, he lived to be 85. So, so cigarettes didn't kill him, and that's for sure. <laughs> He, he does look like an actor. And this picture here, I don't, it's going to be very difficult to see, but right there is my grandmother wearing the mink coat that Al Capone had sent her for Christmas that year.